welcome students the last lectures on module number 6 towards effective leadership and today i'll be concluding this module by talking to you extensively about contingency approaches if you recall in our previous lectures we have talked about three types of approaches until 1970s around 1970s we have talked about trait theories we have talked about behavioral theories and now we are going to talk about contingency approaches so this module thus is a summary of broad approaches towards effective leadership so the last being this contingency approaches that we are going to discuss today among contingency approaches we are going to talk about fiedler model situational theory and path goal theory we'll start with fiedler's model fred fiedler developed the first comprehensive contingency models of leadership so this model proposes that effective group performance depends upon the proper match between the leader's style and the degree to which the situation gives the leader control so the situation has also to give the leader enough control so contingency approaches you may see as we pass through these models that i am talking about you will see that these are the approaches which seek to delineate the characteristics of situations that's how fiedler talked about situation so contingency approaches talk about characteristics of situations and followers and examine the leadership styles that can be used effectively following these fiedler's contingency model was a model designed to diagnose whether a leader is task oriented or relationship oriented and match leadership style to the situation so how do you identify leadership style for this fiedler believes a key factor in leadership success is the individual's basic leadership style how do you identify a leadership style that's what we are going to discuss from fiedler's point of view today he created what is called a least preferred coworker lpc questionnaire we'll call it lpc questionnaire hereafter i recall to your memory lpc full form is least preferred coworker he used this to identify that style of leadership by measuring whether a person is task or relationship oriented so this lpc questionnaire asks respondents to think of all of the coworkers that they have ever had and describe the one that they least enjoyed working with by rating that person on a scale of 1 to 8 for each of 16 sets of contrasting adjectives so 16 set of contrasting adjectives are given for example pleasant unpleasant efficient inefficient open guarded supportive hostile these opposite meaning adjectives are provided and they have to rate them on a scale of 1 to 8 among these let us say you have taken a questionnaire and you have rated your coworkers if you describe the person you are least able to work with in favorable terms that is a high lpc score is there then fiedler would label you as relationship oriented on the other hand if you see your least preferred coworker in unfavorable terms which means a low lpc score then you are primarily interested in productivity and are task oriented fiedler assumes an individual's leadership style is fixed this means that if a situation requires a task oriented leader and the person in the leadership position is relationship oriented either the situation has to be modified or the leader has to be replaced in order to achieve optimal effectiveness defining the situation that becomes important now after assessing an individual's basic leadership style using this lpc questionnaire fiedler matches the leader with the situation we have talked about leader so far now the situation what fiedler identified was three contingency or situational dimensions one is leader member relations second is task structure third is position power let's talk one by one leader member relations is the degree of confidence trust and respect the members have in their leader that signifies leader member relations task structure on the other hand is the degree to which the job assignments are structured or unstructured on the other hand there is this position power 
and this is the degree of influence a leader has over power variables such as hiring, firing, discipline, promotions, salary increases, all these are where a leader can demonstrate his power. Then after understanding the situation, the next step is to evaluate the situation in terms of these three variables. So here Fiedler states that better the leader member relations, the more highly the job is structured, the stronger the position power, the more control the leader has. Look at the relationship, stronger the position power, then more control the leader has. We have talked about Fiedler's model so far, let us talk about situational leadership theory which is called SLT, hereafter we will be terming it as SLT. Successful leadership depends upon selecting the right leadership style contingent on the followers readiness or the extent to which they are willing and able to accomplish a specific task. Look at the followers readiness which is being emphasized over here. A leader should choose one of the four behaviors which we are going to talk about depending upon follower readiness. Please note the highlighted words from among whatever I am going to talk. If followers are unable and unwilling to do a task, then the leader needs to give clear and specific directions. If the followers are unable but willing, then the leader needs to display high task orientation to compensate for followers lack of ability and high relationship orientation to get them to buy into the leader's desires. If followers are able and unwilling, the leader needs to use a supportive and participative style. If they are both able and willing, then the leader does not need to do much. So you see that depending upon whether the followers are unable and unwilling, unable and willing, able but unwilling, able and willing, four combinations have been discussed. So you see the SLT, Hersey and Blanchard's situational theory of leadership, you see that follower characteristics are given on the left side. An appropriate leader style is diagrammatically represented. When there is low readiness level, then the relationship has to be high task and low relationship. When there is moderate readiness level, it has to be a selling style that is high task, high relationship. When there is a high readiness, participative leadership has to be shown low task and high relationship. And when very high readiness level is seen, delegating style has to be used that is low task, low relationship. If you remember, all these styles of relationship have been discussed in the previous module. So depending upon the individual followers, the leadership style has to be tailored according to this theory. Once again, the diagram shows that there is a follower directed and a leader directed style when, uh, depending upon the follower readiness. When the followers are able and willing or confident, there is one particular style, able but unwilling or insecure, able but willing or confident and unable and unwilling or insecure. So here it will be leader directed, here it will be follower directed. Then comes the path goal theory, the next theory. Path goal theory extracts elements from Ohio State leadership research on initiating structure and consideration. I recall your attention to the terms that we have used in Ohio State study when we have discussed Ohio State study. So initiating structure and consideration. And in addition to that, there is what is called expectancy theory of motivation, which also this theory has used. It is the leader's job to provide followers with information, support and other resources necessarily to in order that they achieve their goals. The term path goal, the very term path goal implies effective leaders clarify followers paths to their work goals and make the journey easier by reducing roadblocks. There are four leader behaviors that path goal theory talks about. Directive leadership where the leader gives specific guidance and direction. Supportive leadership where the leader provides assistance. Participative leadership where the leader is hand in hand with subordinates and achievement oriented relationship where sets of challenging goals and has high expectations. Basic style usually is to adapt the participative leadership style according to certain studies. Whether a leader should be directive or supportive or should demonstrate any other behavior, it depends upon a, a complex analysis of situation. So situation comes into the picture over here. In fact, the situation predicts the style of leadership. For example, 
Directive leadership yields greater satisfaction when tasks are ambiguous or stressful than when they are highly structured and well laid out. If they are well structured and well laid out, there is no need for direction. When they are ambiguous, there is a need for directive leadership. On the other hand, supportive leadership results in high performance and satisfaction when employees are performing structured tasks. When this task is anyways structured, then the leader needs to provide a supportive role. Directive leadership is most likely to be perceived as redundant among employees with high ability or considerable experience. If they already have a lot of experience, then they may not require directive relationship. So let us look at a diagrammatic representation of um, path goal theory. You see that there is leadership behavior which may be directive, which may be supportive, which may be participative or achievement oriented. Then what is important is subordinate characteristics and of course the task characteristics and subordinates when they are motivated enough they reach the goals and productivity increases. So you see that there is a common stream running through as the arrow indicates over here. So the leadership behavior, the subordinate characteristics and the task characteristics together have an influence on the subordinates when they are enough motivated then goals and productivity increases. So, Path goal theory in summary has been developed by Evans and House and it talks about adapting leadership to the situation. Leader can impact performance of others by offering paths to desired goals and rewards are contingent on increased performance. A diagrammatic representation once again over here. You see the situation. There is leader behavior, there is impact on follower and what will be the outcome. We will go stepwise. Let us talk about the followers who lack self confidence. So, what is to be attained over here? Supportive leadership. Supportive leadership is the most relevant over here because it provides an increase in confidence to achieve work outcomes. And then the outcome is increased effort, improved satisfaction, improved performance. Similarly, let us look at ambiguous job. When there is an ambiguous job, the best style of leadership would be directive relationship, this leads to a clarity in path to reward and this once again results in the outcome of increased effort, improved satisfaction and improved performance. On the other hand, let us once again look at yet another situation, lack of job challenge. Then the leader behavior would be achievement oriented leadership and then the impact on the follower would be that the leader would set and strive for high goals. And the outcome is increased effort, improved satisfaction, improved performance. On the other hand, there may be a situation where there is incorrect reward. Then the leadership would be participative leadership and this would clarify followers needs to change rewards. And then once again, the outcome would be increased effort, improved satisfaction and improved performance. Let us compare and contrast the universalist theories which we have talked about quite a while ago in this module and the contingency approaches that we have just talked today. Universalist approach talks about leadership traits and behaviors and its outcomes talk in terms of performance, satisfaction and others. Let us now look at how contingency approach views it. It talks about the follower characteristics as well, the style, the traits and the behavior position of the leader, the needs, maturity, training and cohesion of the followers. And on the other hand, there is this task structure which talks about the systems, the environment and the situation. And finally, these three put together determine the outcomes in terms of performance, satisfaction, etc. So, in this module, we have covered three types of theories. We started with universalist theory and we talked about great man or woman theory and trait theory. We talked about behavioral theories where we talked about Ohio State studies and Michigan State studies and in addition to that we also talked about managerial or leadership grid. Then we also talked about contingency approaches and thus we have talked about leadership theories from three points of view. Now as engineering students, try to apply this in the context of your work situations, whether your traits, whether your natural abilities, whether your behavior or the situation, follower characteristics and the task structure together contribute to the effectiveness of leadership. Thank you for being with us. We have completed two modules on leadership. Thank you.